Time Bibliophiles, Miss Stacy here with another edition of Imagination Time. And today we have a book by Seth Myers. This is called I'm Not Scared, You're Scared, and the pictures are by Rob Saya Jr. Once there was a bear who was easily scared. Each night before going to sleep, he would lie, tie a bell to his door that would make a noise if anyone tried to sneak in, because even a bear is too easily scared is a heavy sleeper. He was even afraid of his own reflection, and because he couldn't see himself, he never brushed well and always had food stuck in his teeth. Yuck. When you're a scared bear with food in your teeth, you don't have many friends. Bear had one, Rabbit. Here's Rabbit. Rabbit was never scared. She read scary stories. She slept with her door wide open. And she brushed her teeth while hanging from a tree branch by her ears. This gave her very strong ears. One day, Rabbit made an announcement. Bear, we are going on an adventure. Bear suggested that instead of going on an adventure, they could read a book about adventures. That way, if anything goes wrong, we can just close the book. Rabbit looked at her friend and asked, Bear, are you scared? And Bear replied, I'm not scared, you're scared. And with that, Bear walked past Rabbit and out the front door. Bear stopped to make sure they had everything they needed. Do I need a bike helmet? Bear asked. No, said Rabbit. Do I need oven mitts? No, said Rabbit. Do I need bear repellent spray? You're a bear, said Rabbit. After walking a while, they came to a small stream. It looks deep, said Bear. It's not deep, said Rabbit. It looks cold, said Bear. It's not cold, said Rabbit. It looks like it's filled with fish who have very sharp teeth, the kind of fish who would like nothing more than a nibble at the ankles of a delicious bear. Rabbit looked at his poor friend and asked again, Bear, are you scared? And Bear replied once again, I'm not scared, you're scared. And with that, Bear walked along the stream until it narrowed enough that he could step over it. There he found Rabbit, who had fallen asleep, waiting for him. After a bit longer, they came to the edge of the woods. It looks dark, said Bear. It's not dark, said Rabbit. It looks spooky, said Bear. It's not spooky, said Rabbit. It looks like it's full of trees that are going to fall down and bonk us on the head, said Bear. Rabbit looked at her friend and said, Bear, are you scared? And Bear replied, I'm not scared, you're scared. And with that, Bear, realizing he would do anything to avoid the dark and spooky woods, walked to the road where he waited for the bus. The bus picked him up and drove him all the way around the forest. Where he got out on the other side, he woke up Rabbit, who once again had fallen asleep waiting for him. They walked some more until they came to a mountain. It looks high, said Bear. It's not high, said Rabbit. It looks slippery, said Bear. It's not slippery, said Rabbit. It, it looks like one of the rocks will fall and roll and land on my paw, said Bear. Look at that cute little bird. Rabbit looked at her friend and just had to ask, Bear, are you scared? And Bear replied, I'm not scared, you're scared. And with that, Bear, realizing he would do anything to avoid the high and slippery mountain, walked to the nearest train station. The train took him halfway around the mountain to an airfield. At the airfield, Bear bought a ticket on a helicopter that flew him to the top of the mountain and dropped him off next to Rabbit, who, no surprise here, had fallen asleep. Rabbit said Bear waking up, we sh should we go home? I am not going home, said Rabbit, and she bounced off with Bear following behind her. After a bit more walking, they found themselves at one side of a long rope bridge. Bear stopped. It looks rickety, said Bear. It might be a little rickety, said Rabbit. It looks old, said Bear. It might be pretty old, said Rabbit. It looks like the boards might break if you were heavy enough, said Bear. Mmm, agreed Rabbit. Rabbit looked at her friend and said, Bear, are you scared? And Bear took a deep breath and said, Yes! Yes, Rabbit, I'm scared. I was scared of the river, and I was scared of the forest, and I was scared of the mountain, but I'm the most scared about this long, old, rickety bridge. And with that, Bear turned around and headed home. He marched back to the helicopter that flew him back to the airfield, then took the train back to the forest. See, there's the dark and spooky woods. Where he got on a bus that took him to the river, deep and cold stream, so he could cross where it was narrow and then trudged all the way back to his house where he crawled into bed. Rabbit went to the middle of the bridge and thought, see, this bridge isn't dangerous. It's a good bridge. And to prove it, he started to jump up and down, and then she jumped harder, and then she jumped harder, and then she had ever jumped in her life, and then the board she was jumping on cracked in half, and Rabbit fell through the hole in the bridge. Lucky for Rabbit, she had very strong ears. 
But she knew she wouldn't be able to hold on forever. And because of this, Rabbit, for the first time in her life, was scared. Now, Bear and Rabbit hadn't noticed that throughout their journey, they had been followed by a small bird. Bird realized she had to get help, so she flew as fast as she could all the way to Bear's house. What a nice bird. Bird flew in Bear's window and started chirping as loud as she could, but Bear didn't wake up because even bears who are easily scared are very heavy sleepers. Bird was about to give up when she saw the bell on the doorknob. There it is. Bird put her head inside it and shook it as hard as she could. Bear jumped up out of bed to hear Bird yell, Rabbit has fallen through the bridge and needs your help. And in that moment, Bear felt something he had never felt before. Courage. He was so worried about his friend that instead of staying home where it was safe, he ran out the door faster than any bear had ever run before. When Bear reached the stream, he ran right through it. It only came up to his ankles. When he came to the forest, he ran right through it. It was only three trees. And when he came to the mountain, he didn't even think about taking a train and a helicopter. He just climbed right up it. It wasn't very high. It wasn't very high at all, was it? Meanwhile, Rabbit was now hanging on with only one ear. She could feel it slipping too. And just as she lost her grip, Bear grabbed her by the ear and lifted her to safety. Bear, are you scared? asked Rabbit. And Bear said with pride and honesty, Rabbit, I was scared. I was scared too, said Rabbit. And Bear smiled and said, sometimes it's okay to be scared. That was nice, wasn't it? He saved his friend. That night when Bear brushed his teeth, he didn't hide from his reflection. He looked right at it and do you know what he saw? A very brave bear with no food in his teeth. Today we have five pretty flowers because it's spring, yay. We're gonna count the flowers. One, two, three, four, five. Five little flowers growing in a row. The first one said, I'm purple, you know. The second one said, I'm pink as pink can be. And the third one said, I'm blue like the sea. The fourth one said, I'm a pale white fellow. The fifth one said, my color is yellow. Then out came the sun, big and bright, and the five little flowers smiled with delight. Our second story for today is by Jan Thomas, and it's called, My Friends Make Me Happy. Hi, sheep. There's your friends. Hi, friends. Can you guess what makes me happy? Let me guess, let me guess. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It starts with the letter F. Hmm, he's thinking, isn't he? Thinking hard. Fish! He sees sheep with a fish. Fish? Don't be silly, donkey. That's not what makes sheep happy. No, it's not fish. Wait, let me guess. They are, you know, they're going to Thinking. Fans! And he's imagining sheep with a fan. Isn't that cute? Cute pig. Fans! Don't be silly dog. That's not what makes sheep happy. No, it's not fans. Quack! You want to guess what makes me happy, duck? And duck is thinking and thinking and thinking. And he sees sheep with a turnip. Turnip, says Duck. This Duck loves turnips. Turnips? Don't be silly, Duck. Turnips don't even start with the letter F. It's fish. It's fans. Turnips! That's not it. It's friends. It's friends make him happy. My friends make me happy. Oh, you make us happy too, sheep. Quack, quack. It's the happiest. That's a good book. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, welcome to craft time, everyone. Today we're going to make a fun craft. It could be for spring or it could be for Mother's Day. And what it is, is a hand print bouquet. All right. In your take and make, you're going to have three different colors of a construction paper. You're gonna have three pipe cleaners, some ribbon, and then you're gonna have some little, like half of a pipe cleaner, three, three for that. So at first you're gonna take your hand and you're gonna trace your hand and you're going to cut that out. So because my hand's so big, I 
Got a little person's hand. So you're gonna do this on all three of the papers. Okay. So if you need help cutting them out, just have a grown up help you. All right. And so now we're gonna cut them out. And you can do this with any color that you want. It's just that this is the colors that were in the take and make. Okay, there's one hand. All right, so we have all three hands. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, um, you're gonna take, first we're going to, so first we're gonna take your stem and you're gonna take the half piece one that's a different color and you're gonna wrap it around the top of your stem to where it goes all the way down. Like that, cause it'll be kind of what's in the middle of your flower. So it kind of should look like that. So we'll do all of them. And be careful when you're working with the pipe cleaners. They kind of are sharp, especially the ones that have been cut in half. So you don't want to hurt your finger. two last one okay okay so now you're gonna take your hand and I'm gonna take a piece of tape. Let's see, let me do, yeah. So you're gonna take a piece of tape, put it by the thumb, kinda of tape your little thing on there, and then you're gonna just turn it and turn it and turn it and turn it. You might want to make it a little looser than that. Yeah, a little looser. And put a piece of tape down at the bottom. We're gonna keep doing that with all of them. Put a piece of tape there, like that. And then just turn them a little bit to where it's just on the other side where you can tape it. You can kind of fold back your fingers if you want to give it a little. And then the last one. And then you're gonna put them together like you would a bouquet. And you're gonna take your ribbon, and I would just twist it so they'll stay together. And then you're gonna take your ribbon and make a bow, like you do when you tie your shoes.
And there you go. You have your bouquet for your mom or your grandma or your aunt or whoever, even just your friend. Thank you guys. Have a good craft day.